welcome back for another clarinet tutorial from Nottingham Music Excellence. So as you've probably gathered, I'm sort of doing, currently working my way through this grade six clarinet book. I had hoped to finish this and get it all wrapped up before the end of December, but life is life and I didn't quite manage it. So here we are, Happy New Year everybody. Um, I'm, so I'm currently up to B2 and I'm gonna give a tutorial on the Fantasy Stuck by Garde. A challenging piece here, I think, quite one of the longer pieces, but I think a really super piece to play, really nice indeed. And also, after the tutorial, you'll get a, a chance, as usual, to play along with the piano accompaniment all by yourself. Hope you enjoy the video. Here we go. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I first listened to this, I didn't know the piece, actually, and I listened to it through with the accompaniment. I straight away thought, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to play this with, uh, you know, through the backing track, like just through the earphones and try and synchronize it up in a video. I thought this is just not going to happen. Um, but I persevered with it a little bit and a bit like what I'm telling you guys to do all the time. I sort of listened to the piano part and I just listened to it through with the piano score. And as I sort of got to know the piece a little bit more, it became gradually more feasible, I thought. So I did eventually manage to sync up a recording with the piano with this. And I have to say, it, the piece really grew on me. I think, this is, um, I think this is a really fantastic piece to play, actually. But having said that, I do think that this will be a, a step too far for a lot of players. I don't think this will be a popular choice for grade six. I think for a number of reasons. I think the, because the piano part is quite complex and it's quite tricky to fit with the piano part, that will automatic. I think that will inevitably knock a few players out. Perhaps you know those clarinet players that play along with their teacher. You know that might knock a few um, piano players off. I, I mean, I, I certainly won't be playing this with any of my pupils. It, the piano part is just too hard. So I think it, it is one of those pieces again that you need to rehearse a lot with the piano. You need to really know the piano part, what goes on in there. So going back to that opening tune there, let's just have a little look at the very start. So it says Confuoco Forte, and of course the Italian term is Allegro Moderato Vivace, sorry, Allegro Molto Vivace. So it's quick, it's loud, Confuoco, it's with fire. So you really can't just kind of stand there and play it with half a sound, this one. You've got to be so committed um, to really sort of play it out and and really sort of show your stuff, you know, don't um, don't just play MF, you know, whatever you do. So, and then immediately when you get to there, you can kind of back off a little bit. So you go from that Confuoco to MF. So you just drop back a tiny bit. And then down to piano dolce there, so really soften the sound. Okay, first bit we've got up to now. So we've got up to this slightly tricky tonguey bit. So the first technically bit, technically tricky. Technically difficult bit that you might sort of find a bit awkward. Um, now you'll notice on my performance, I cheated a little bit on this. I didn't like the da 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 da. -da. I thought it sounded a, just a touch aggressive, you know, so I lightened it a little bit by going. might be a good way for you to get through that passage if you're struggling to if you're struggling to just kind of uh, da -da 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 -da. so with the tongue in just sounds a little bit sounds a little bit aggressive doesn't it for that for that moment in the piece so I think no one's going to argue with that if you just uh, cheat a little bit there <laughs> So I mentioned about that passage there with the, the piano sort of playing off the beat to you. Try and 
really get used to that. It feels a bit weird at first, I thought, when I played, played that, but you, you'll get used to that. And then back to the main theme again. Da 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 dee, dum da dee. So you back to that again. And then the tonguing again. Da 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 dee, da dum. But then we go into it slightly changes, doesn't it? Um, Okay, so we get to this beautiful tranquilo middle section. And if you want to rehearse from this section, which is really useful, I've put the minutes in the description. So click on the timestamp and you can rehearse your to your heart's content. Um, I think you'll probably hear that the piano part goes from perhaps 54, 55, and you'll hear those quavers uh, at 57 and 58. So do rehearse from that point and, and just practice this middle section a fair few times and it will just save you having to go back to the beginning every single time you practice it with the piano. Okay, so let's go over this tranquilo section. Now this, I really like this bit actually. I think it's just so beautiful to play. The only, my only slight gripe with it is that I, I just wanted to, by the time you get to that point, I just want an extra bar or two, you know, just to have a little bit of time to sort of, um, you know, on the read or something and, um, you know, just like have a few more seconds before you fire into it. But um, anyway, you don't get it. So, so you only get a few beats off and then So you'll notice there a lot of dolce, a lot of piano dolce playing, but kind of quite big sort of hairpins up and down in the dynamic range. And a, a forzando, a forzando, should I say, that you do with the piano there at 66. So try and synchronize that carefully. Um, and then the next section going into 67. And then this lovely bit, which you can really sort of move it along with the piano here. I, I love this bit. Okay, and moving into 79, we've got a, a brief period of what you might call seriousness here. It sounds a little bit more dark and haunting, doesn't it, in the piano part here. So just be aware of what happens in the piano there, and then you'll notice that what you might call, we're gonna call it the, the galloping piano theme. Um, that comes back in at 84, 85, and Again, mark it on your piano part because the piano comes in halfway through that bar with that galloping theme and you really need to know where that comes in and be able to pick up on the pulse straight away because you're back in again with the Confuoco sort of big theme again and you really want to get this at the right time. You don't want to miss it. You're going to play all a load of material that you've already played so a lot of repetition here but then it moves into the closing kind of finale doesn't it so it slightly changes And then the piano, know what happens in the piano part. Da, 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 So you really got to know how this fits with the piano part. So 
So again, just looking over the whole thing, I think if you if you analyze any bit of it, it's not actually, there isn't really any bars in there that are terribly difficult to play. But I think the challenge with this piece is it's quite a large work, it's quite lengthy, and you've got to be really, really dedicated to the sound and not be afraid to, to really play out and, and get your sound out there. In terms of standard for grade six, I think this is, I think this is a really good grade six piece to play. I think in, in a lot of ways, once you've learned how this fits with the piano part, I think it's probably easier than the B1. I, I suspect that people will listen to this and they'll automatically go for B1 because it's slower. Um, and they'll think, you know, they'll think, oh, that adagio is, is a, a lot more manageable because it's slower. But remember that the, the slower pieces are so much more exposed. I think the, the Behrman Adagio is probably a little bit more difficult than this in some ways, in terms of um, sort of playing slowly and having your sound and your tuning so exposed. Whereas this, you've got such a, a big sort of ensemble of sound with you and, and the piano, if you're both sort of really going for it and making a big sound, I think this is a, a bit more of an impressive piece to play. So I think if, you, if you're up for the challenge and you have a go at this, I think you, you could be up for some really good marks. But anyway, if you're doing this for grade six, the best of luck. Do let me know how you're getting on with it in the comments section. And of course, good luck for grade six. And have a go now at Play Along With The Piano Accompaniment and see how you get on with that.